Hello and welcome to Swipe on this week's show. Coming to a TV screen near you, why games console makers are moving into TV. The Podfather, we meet the mastermind behind the original iPod. The Beats goes on, is Apple trying to prove it's still cool? And we're learning ballet and making it rain with dollar bills in this week's Games Review. We're pretty much sport for choice when it comes to watching TV these days. Catch-up services and internet streaming sites mean we're used to getting what we want when we want. Netflix is now so popular it makes its own original content for viewers, and it's not the only one. Microsoft and Sony are both developing their own programming with a view to turning devoted gamers who use their consoles into avid viewers. But will it work? Sky's Katie Spence has been taking a look. Today we send forth a vessel designed for battle. Halo is a gaming goliath. It's sold in its millions. But Xbox don't just want gamers to turn on their consoles to play the sci-fi series. It wants fans to tune in. Microsoft's move into television making has the backing of some Hollywood heavyweights. Steven Spielberg and director Ridley Scott are both attached to two projects based on the franchise. Investing in original content is clearly a priority for the console maker in what could be a future battleground if it wants to become an all-round entertainment provider. In getting exclusive um, programming purely for their console, um, I think that's their, their way of taking a proper stride forward and saying we're not just a box that you happen to also have Netflix and Now TV and Amazon Instant Video on. We've also got stuff that you can't get anywhere else. It's not just Xbox, Sony also has its sights set on making unique content for gamers, starting with an adaptation of the popular comic book series Powers. Up until very recently, a console maker commissioning its own television would have seemed unlikely. But the popularity of original content on streaming sites has proven that you don't have to be a broadcaster to have a hit. Getting viewers can be virtually guaranteed if you know how to look at the figures. One heartbeat away from the presidency, not a single vote cast in my name. Democracy is so overrated. Netflix had predicted House of Cards success from stats of what its viewers enjoyed most. Kevin Spacey films, movies by director David Fincher and the original British version of the show all rated highly. Combining all three proved to be a formidable combination. Working with big data has made commissioning a hit, less of a guessing game and more of a maths equation. Media companies earlier didn't pay much attention to data because it was content is the key, right? Content was the king and if you had the content, yes, you've, you've got the customer. Today is changing, data is the king. So people who have the most enriched data can create more value out of it than people who have just the content. Hello, Earth. Welcome to the Hulubratory. A great deal of investment in program making is happening online, from Yahoo and Hulu to Amazon, which is trying to tap into its huge customer base. Its recent commissions include a new drama from the creator of The X-Files and a comedy starring Gail Garcia Bernal. What's interesting what they're doing is they're, they're producing some pilots for people to then watch and view and then rate. And then based upon the sort of reception they receive, they then decide whether or not to go to where with those programmes. They're not mucking about. They're throwing a lot of money into this. While many big names online are keen to capitalise on the fast-growing market for digital content on the web, the commissioning rush is likely to only continue if they can convince viewers to tune in in large numbers. The hope of console makers like Xbox and PlayStation is that by already being a fixture in people's homes, they could have a competitive edge. Katie Spencer, Sky News. You're watching Swipe. Coming up, is Apple looking to get its swagger back with Beats? But first, we all know what an iPod and an iPhone is, but what you might not know is the name of the man who created them, Tony Fidel. He's been in England, speaking at the Hay Festival. But before he headed back to the States, Sky's Tom Cheshire managed to sit down with him. He's one of the biggest names in Silicon Valley. There's something really cool happening where music and this whole digital world that we live in are starting to come together. It was this device that transformed Apple's fortunes, and Tony Fidel wasn't just there at the start. He worked on 18 generations of the music player, as well as designs for the original iPhone. In a London hotel, I had the chance to sit down with a man known as the father of the iPod. 
there was a, a person at Apple and we had a mutual friend uh, together and coworker. And uh, through a, a, a basically a random series of lunches, that's the way m Apple met me and I met Apple. We, they were looking uh, for a c consultant to come in and help uh, try to find out how to bring digital music n beyond the CD. They were working with MP other MP3 players at the time with iTunes, and they were just not an optimal experience. And so I was brought in, given my mobile experience doing handhelds, um, to and and my company that I had at the time doing music plus uh, you know home theater, to come in and say what would a digital music player look like if Apple were to design it. Meet the Nest Protect Smoke and Carbon Monoxide Alarm. Since he left Apple, Fidel set up his smart home devices firm, Nest, bought by Google for around £1.9 billion last year. His new mission? Giving us thermostats and smoke alarms for the smartphone generation. Google came along with the acquisition for several billion dollars. Apart from uh, the several billion dollars, why, uh, why sell and why sell to Google in particular? Early on, before we actually shipped a product, I met with Sergey Brin and showed him you know, the, the Nest learning thermostat and he was just blown away and they wanted to actually buy the company then. And what we said was, no, how about investing? And so we developed a relationship over multiple years where they continued to invest in the, in the company and, and we got to learn about each other. And so when we went around and we were, uh, people were trying to give us more money because they, they saw our success, we said, well, you know, Google, would you like to reinvest? And they said, hey, maybe it's time for us to actually talk about that acquisition. And when we looked forward at the technologies we needed, Google had much of that. And we couldn't believe that it fit really hand in glove. So for us, this was not a marriage of money. This was a marriage of technologies, ideas, and vision for the, for the consumer and how we can change the home together. For all its inventiveness, Google has never been praised for its design. The search giant will also be hoping that Fidel can bring some of that Apple design flair inside your home. Tom Cheshire, Sky News. You're watching Swipe coming up. Google puts its foot down to try to lead the way in the driverless car market. But first, for a cool £1.8 billion, Apple has confirmed it is buying Beats Electronics. The deal for the headphone maker and music streaming specialist is believed to be the company's largest acquisition to date. So is this about regaining some street cred or does Apple want to strike a new chord? Tom Platt has been finding out. Since Dr. Dre founded Beats in 2008, the company has proved a force to be reckoned with. It launched its subscription-based music streaming service earlier this year, but it's perhaps best known for its headphones, easily recognisable, cleverly marketed, and for many, the epitome of cool. Especially among the, uh, the younger crowd, they've got a reputation for being a uh, happening product. It's by far the most expensive acquisition in Apple's 38-year history. So why fork out the billion-pound price tag? If you look at the current music market, downloads are declining uh, for iTunes. Um, uh, so, so Apple needed to do something. Albums are declining, streaming is growing. And if you look at Netflix and see what happened in the video side, it's a nature, natural next step for Apple. For Apple, the deal could counter the threat posed to its iTunes store by streaming, but it'll have some way to go to catch up with the likes of Spotify's 10 million subscribers, as its estimated Beats has only around 250,000. For many though, the deal is about more than just streaming, it's about helping Apple regain the cool factor. There is a certain dimension of branding to this. Yeah, absolutely. Beats is the coolest thing in the digital music world right now. They have the coolest executives. Um, they've got a great brand and they've got a really rapidly growing consumer base, both for the hardware and for the digital subscription service side. So Apple is definitely grabbing onto their coattails a little bit and trying to keep their own brand aloft as long as they can. Billionaire boys club for real, homie. Huh? Yeah, Fix you your face. That. The deal itself is expected to close before the end of September, and with Dr. Dre and his co-founder Jimmy Iovine joining the team, Apple will no doubt be hoping that a little of their coolness will rub off on the rest of its brand. Tom Platt, Sky News. You're watching Swipe coming up. Forget about having two left feet. We've got ballet for beginners in this week's Games Review. But first, here's a roundup of anything you might have missed over the last few days. Fancy a ride in a car with no steering wheel, no pedals and just two buttons for stop and go?
Well, this is Google's first prototype for its self-driving car. Rather than adapting existing models, it's decided to build its own. It claims the car's sensors will eliminate blind spots and detect objects as far as over two football fields away. So could computer-operated cars actually be safer than when people are in control? When Google has driven its cars for hundreds of thousands of miles, it has been involved, I think, in two accidents, and both of those were when human beings drove into their cars. So it, this is a very much safer technology than a human being behind the wheel. Chinese gamers could soon be playing on PlayStations after the 14-year ban on video game consoles was finally lifted. Sony's teaming up with state-owned Shanghai Oriental Pearl to set up two joint venture companies in Shanghai's free trade zone. Last month, Microsoft signed a deal to sell Xbox One consoles in China. A Sky News investigation has found almost 2,000 children have been investigated by police in the last three years over social media abuse and online bullying. Children as young as nine are among those who faced police action, including being charged with a criminal offence. So whereas crime generally um, for young people um, has gone down in terms of people, be, you know, young people being criminalised, it seems as if it's moved very slightly to um, the internet and to um, social networks. Some iPhone and iPad owners have had their devices frozen by a hacker, demanding £55 to unlock them. Most of the attacks have happened in Australia, but some UK users may have been targeted. The hacker, known as Oleg Pliss, uses the Find My iPhone app to get in before demanding payment. The Australian government has told users not to pay up. Android users of the music streaming service Spotify have been told to upgrade their apps after a hacking incident. Spotify said that although the breach only affected one user, it felt it needed to take action. iOS and Windows phones don't appear to have been affected. A new crowdfunding project wants to get us walking on sunshine. Julian Scott Brusel's plan to cover American roads with solar panels has so far raised $1 million through Indiegogo. So far, they've only built a prototype, but they hope to start manufacturing soon. Now, never let it be said that here on Swipe, we don't strive to bring you all the weird and wonderful things that the gaming world has to offer. This week, we've a realistic role-playing revenge game, mini-me's and dancing help from the Dutch National Ballet gaming guru Jane Douglas has been test driving a few. Always Sometimes Monsters is an indie game for PC and it is also a life simulation adventure. So you start out by choosing the sex and race and sexual preference of your writer character and then you hit rock bottom, basically, and you've got no money, you're being evicted from your flat, and your true love has moved across the country, and you have 30 days to go and break up his or her wedding, if you like. You're endlessly presented with choices, and some of them are like tedious and mundane, like in real life, and some of them are a bit more morally murky, because it is a game that is interested in what you will do when you're desperate and to what depths you will sink. It's quite misleading in its, in its simplicity and its re retro cutesy aesthetic, and it actually deals with some, some quite serious and grown-up ideas. Hey, I'm Steve. Tom and Actually Life, by way of contrast, is another life simulation sort of game. It's much, much lighter hearted. Uh, it's for the Nintendo 3DS and in it you create a character that's like a little virtual stand-in for yourself. Again, very cute and you customise its appearance and its personality and then you let it live on an island that's populated with all your friends who you've also created or imported. You can try on outfits and have fun times, but also you can uh, woo your sweetheart and maybe be successful and maybe not be successful. If you've tried uh, The Sims, then it's a little bit like the social elements of The Sims, but through that Nintendo lens of being very silly and quite frivolous. Bounden is a curiosity of an iPhone game. It's a two-person cooperative dancing game played on a single iPhone. Each partner has to put their thumb, put one thumb on a spot on the touchscreen and not let go while you use the uh, gyro sensors in the iPhone to tilt a cursor around a sphere. 
The idea being, if you've got the intrinsic grace, it will look like you're dancing. If you don't, it'll look like you're playing a game of Twister on an iPhone or something. But the choreography is designed by the choreographer from the Dutch National Ballet. So if you have a look at the trailer, the people in it really look quite graceful. And, and I don't know, maybe that'll be you. It wasn't me. But uh, it's well worth a try because it is that little bit different. Make It Rain, The Love of Money, to give it its full title, is either an anti-capitalist spoof or a colossal waste of everyone's time, possibly both. It's a, an iPhone game or an Android game, you know, obviously for your mobile. And in it, you make money by doing the, you know, the Make It Rain gesture, just like doing this, swiping your touchscreen just endlessly to make money. And that's how you make money. And you make money to make more money, to spend that money on investments that help you make money faster. Those investments can be something like building a lemonade stand that helps you make money faster or investing in a casino. At the shadier end of the investments, you can buy off a politician or hire a lobbyist or insider trading. And to the right person, it will be really addictive. Um, to everyone else, I don't think they'll get it. Also, you will look quite strange doing it on the tube, I think, to, with any kind of success, which is like high speed. I think you will look seriously old on the tube. Thanks, Jane. That's it for this week. Remember, you can catch up with the breaking tech stories all week on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone apps, and skynews.com. See you next time. Bye-bye.